Morning guys, uh, today I'm going to show you how to set up a VM, a Debian 8 VM that is set up as best as possible for FOG 1.3.4 which is the current stable release of FOG from FOG Project. Um, if you're not aware with their website, I would recommend that you get aware with fogproject.org. This is the main page, of course, and they have a forums at forums.fogproject.org right here where you can ask questions. Okay, so enough of that. We're going to, uh, I'm going to be using uh, Vert Manager to, I use Vert Manager to manage my VMs. You might be using Hyper V or VMware or VirtualBox or what have you. So it might be different for you, but I'm wanting to just use the, uh, I want to show you guys how to set up Debian and its installer. Um, that's the main point of this, but uh, you'd get the ISO file here, the net installer from Debian's website. That would be, if we just search for Debian and go to here, Debian.org, getting Debian right there. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> this one here, the small installer, this is the net installer ISO the 64-bit one, so what this is is just the minimum possible on in an ISO and then everything else that you need gets pulled from the internet as the installer runs so that everything's up to date automatically when you install your OS. So you download that, you'd get it into your hypervisor however you would do that. Mine's already in my hypervisor and it's available through my hypervisor manager, vert manager. I'm going to click the uh, net installer as the ISO to use and you I would recommend you give your fog server four gigs of, of RAM and four cores but for this demonstration I'm gonna keep things small use a half gig and two cores and uh, here for disk space again I suggest you go big um, but for testing purposes, I'm going to be assigning a uh, 100 gigabyte um, volume mm -hmm. already in use, so oh, we're going to delete it then. Okay, new volume. We're going to, this is just for testing purposes and demonstration purposes, but I would generally recommend like 500 gigs, you'll you'll use it probably. Uh, if you're new to imaging, you'll definitely use it. But as you get more experienced, you won't use it. You won't use that 500 gigs. You'll use much less. But anyways, choose that volume forward test network. You always want to use bridge. This is for, uh, in VMware or uh, Hyper-V. You want to use bridge. Finish. All right, so we're in our VM now. It should be launching. So we want to use the uh, the graphical install option for Debian 8, just because it's easy and the GUI is only temporary. We won't be installing Debian 8 with a GUI because you don't need a GUI for your fog server and you need to get comfortable with CLI because literally all of the instructions that you find online about you know administering your fog server on the back end or fixing some Linux problem they're all going to be CLI instructions generally and with the GUI installed all you're going to do is log in to your nice looking pretty GUI and then you're going to go and click on terminal and work at the command line anyways. So why not skip all that? Just skip it all. CLI only. So um, for IP configuration, uh, if you have DHCP on your network, Debian's going to just automatically 
get a DHCP address, you can change this later and make it static, or in your DHCP server, you could in, uh, create a DHCP reservation pre prior to installing this VM, and uh, that would be so. In Vert Manager, you would get the MAC from here, and uh, in Hyper-V and VMware, the MAC would be somewhere else. And you would just uh, make a DHCP reservation with the IP you want, the name you want. I would recommend fog-server as a name because this is the default that the fog client plugs in to the hostname field. It's just easier that way. But anyways, we're not going to cover how to set up and configure DHCP. We're going to cover how to configure partitioning and getting this box ready uh, to, to be a fog server. So the host name will be fog server. Domain name, I don't have one at home, but if you had a domain name, you would put it in here. Um, root password, just uh, I put in testing for testing purpose for demonstration purposes, but pick a strong root password. Full username should be your first name. Do not put fog in here. Do not. That's gonna that that will mess stuff up stuff up later. It really will. Uh, put your first name in here, or put tech in here, or admin, or any anything besides fog because that will break stuff later and it's bad practice. So I put in my first name, which is Wayne. And my password will be testing, testing. I'm in central time, <coughs> detect disks. Okay, so here's the important part. <coughs> this is where we set up our uh, our partitions, our volume groups, and our logical volumes. Now, you should do. There's a reason why we do manual. We're not going to use guided for anything. We're going to do completely manual because. So, Fog puts its images in forward slash images. Let me try to explain this real quick. And note. Uh, let's get a note open. Uh, so. Fog's default images path is images. Fog's default uh, snap-ins path is opt. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, the full path is opt fog snap-ins, but that's neither here nor there at this moment. It's just opt for our purposes. So, if you do not create a container, a storage container for images, not if, but when, your images, uh, when you're capturing an image and it fills up your root partition, your fog server will crash. And it's not because of a uh, flaw in fog. This is how Linux operates. When Linux's or Unix's root or base partition, which is right there, base, root, when that fills up, things go very, very wrong when the OS is out of space and your server will crash and it won't work right and you'll be lucky if it boots and and all kinds of things just go wrong very wrong so to prevent this from happening and it has happened to everybody that I know that was new to fog and I warned them and they of course did not heed the warning and of course a year later their servers crashed because their root volume filled up and they called for help when that happened and so I helped them but uh, they should have followed my advice to begin with put images in its own container put opt in its own container and that's what we're going to be doing and we're going to be doing it the smart way not the dumb way we're going to be using logical volumes and volume groups to do that so back to the installer this is the disk we made. This is uh, a 100 gig disk that I assigned. We're going to click continue. 
Uh, yes. I want to. Uh, well, go. Let's go back. Yes. I want to create a partition on this disk. Continue. And there it is. That's the free space now. So I'm going to create a one gigabyte partition here in this free space. Continue. Create new partition. It's going to be one gig and it's going to be the boot partition. It's going to be bootable. Click uh, so beginning, yep, yep. ext4 journaling file system, the mount point is boot. And uh, this is a uh, bootable. So we'll turn the bootable flag on, boot, we're done. So, so far, we've created one partition, one gigabyte in size. This is the boot partition. This partition mostly doesn't change and a gig is plenty of space. With the remaining space, we're going to create another partition and we're going to use all the space available on the drive, but we're not going to mount it. Do not use the partition. <coughs> Done. Now the reason for this is this is going to become a volume group. Let me try to explain really quickly volume groups and logical volumes and partitions in Linux. So, all right, in Linux you have a physical uh, block device, which is can be uh, a actual physical disk or virtual disk. All right, you partition this out. So say you have 100 gigabytes. You partition this out with partitions uh, one and two. These, this disk will be named generally if it's the only one in the system, dev SDA. So you partition that out with two partitions. Partition uh, one and two. One is boot that you'll later make into boot. It's dev SDA one. So SD is a SATA disk. In the old days of IDE drives it was dev uh, what was it? HD. Alright, and the A denotes the number of the disk. If you had more disks, it would be dev sdb dev sdc. So these are individual disks in the system. Okay. These are physical disks, and the letter here, this letter denotes what type of disk. This is SATA. This letter denotes the disk number. A is one. So the number after this is the partition number, SDA1, that's going to be mounted to boot, and this is a physical partition. The next partition we're going to make is dev SDA2, and we're going to not mount this, but we're going to use it for a volume group. and we're going to call that volume group VG0. And uh, what this will do is it'll make something like this. Dev, uh, what was it? Uh, VG0. And then we'll be able to create logical volumes inside of here later. I think this is the path. I might be wrong. But anyways, here's how it's done. So we're going to take all remaining space here and we're going to uh, uh, configure logical volume manager to use that free space in that partition we just made but didn't mount. See how the first one, this is ext4 and it's mounted at boot, all right? And there's no options for this one. That's because we said do not use. So we're going to use the logical volume manager and click continue. And uh, yes, we want to write changes. Okay, so right now we have zero free physical volumes, zero used physical volumes, uh, zero volume groups, zero logical volumes. 
So we're going to do uh, we're going to click create volume group, and we're going to call it VG zero volume group zero, and we're going to put only this partition into it because this one's being used here by boot. All right, we can't take this one. We're going to use just this one, the big one that we made, and we're going to write our changes. And now we have one volume group. So we need to create logical volumes inside this group. The logical volumes that we're going to be making are called, are we, uh, they're going to be called uh, base swap images and opt, okay? Because we already have boot. These are just the volume, the logical volume names. These aren't the actual paths just yet, but these are names that will let us know what they are later. So, create volume, logical volume, continue, and we're going to use VG0, continue, logical volume name, base, continue, and the base is going to get, I would say, 20 gigabytes, like that. 20 gigs is plenty for base OS. Um, we're going to create another one, another logical volume. We're going to call it, it's going to be in VG0 again. They're all in VG0. going to call it swap. Swap is going to be a maximum of four gigabytes. I would recommend no more than four. Okay, continue. Create logical volume. This one is going to be called images. It's in volume group zero again. So images. Or wait, actually, we're going to create opt first and and then images next. So create logical volume. Opt. Opt, I'm going to give 20 gigs. This is where your snap-ins will be stored. So if you plan to use a lot of snap-ins, make this a little bigger but 20 should be fine if you have no idea if you if you what snap ins even are just put 20 in here and then uh, the last logical volume we're going to make is the images one and this is going to use all remaining space because you want all the space you can for images so this looks like there's 62 or so gigabytes left that's good so when, if you used like a 500 gig virtual disk, that would be a lot more, obviously. So finish. Um, so now we have all this stuff in the partition area. Good stuff. So here's the boot physical partition that will be booting the system with, its, with the boot files. And here's the, uh, the other partition we made with all remaining space and we turned that into a volume group and in there we have all these so this is inside of VG0 volume group VG0 logical volume name is base and it's 20 gigs so here it is and we're gonna map that to the base directory continue use as ext4 journaling file system and uh, the mount point, the mount point is where you mount it. So let me explain this real quick. Uh, all right, so we're working with base right now. This is going to get mounted to here, base, root. Swap is not going to be mounted. It's going to be used as swap. Images get mounted to images. Opt gets mounted to opt, OK? And then uh, the boot partition, which is a physical partition, gets mounted to boot. Everything in Linux starts here. Everything. There are no drive letters. There are no drive names. There are, there are partitions that get mounted somewhere in here. OK? If I added a disk to my Linux operating system, for the purpose of storing my home directory, for instance, the disk might be dev sdb, and I would partition that out into the sdb1 
and I would mount that to forward slash home. Or say I wanted the disk all to myself. Home Wayne. Right? So everything in Linux starts with the base directory. Everything. There are no drive letters. So leave behind Windows thinking and enter into uh, the Linux file system. So here we go. Oh, where are we at? Oh, I forgot. Go back. Oh, yeah. So we're mounting base. Logical volume base. So we're going to mount it to the root file system base, right? Because it's the base. And we're done with this partition. Uh, volume group 0, L logical volume images. This is the big one. We're going to use it as an ext4 journaling file system. The mount point will be a custom one, okay? Enter it manually. It's going to be forward slash images. This has to be lowercase. If you don't use exactly this, forward slash images, all you're doing is asking for trouble in the future. That's all you're doing. Do yourself a favor, lowercase images. So done, continue. So that's done. Next is opt. We'll mount that to opt, just like we mounted the others to the other places. ext4 mount point opt. And then that's that's done. And then um, swap, we'll use as swap. Use as swap area. Continue. Done. All right, so that's it. These part uh, partitions. So the disk is partitioned out into two physical partitions. One we directly mounted to boot. The other one we made into a volume group. We assigned it to a volume group. Later, if you expanded your disk in your hypervisor, all you would do is create another partition and ex and and add it to volume group zero. Volume group zero already lives, right? So after you add it to volume group zero, then you can assign the free space that volume group zero now has to any one of these logical volumes very easily with very simple commands. Um, and then you could expand the file system in these logical volumes to use the free space. Very simple process and it's this is the easiest way to do it. But you, this initial setup, you need to get this right. And when you get it right, when you do it like this here, then down the road when you want to expand root or you want to expand opt or images or you need to make boot a half gig bigger or a gig bigger you can do that these things very easily but generally you don't expand boot there's n you'll, you'll probably never have to do that but anyways that's how we're gonna set it up so we are finished continue Yes, write the changes. And so now it's going to start writing the operating system. And the, it's writing the operating system to the base path. The base path, so let's explain something again. Uh, again, the base path is just this forward slash, one whack, uh, whack forward. Um, when the when this installer is installing the boot files it automatically puts them here when it's creating the home directory it's going here so when it's creating the boot the the uh, boot directory where do you think that's going to go to this partition because it's mounted to boot but when it's making the home directory and it makes my user called Wayne when it Right here, when it uh, is making my home directory, where do you think the, this data will go to? Well, it's going to reside on SDA2 because SDA2 is holding base. 
and there's no explicitly defined disk or volume for home Wayne, so it defaults to base. Okay. Just like when you make images later with fog, when you capture images, because this logical volume is mounted to forward slash images all your images will go to this logical volume and when this fills up your fog server won't crash and all of your snap ins will go to this logical volume and when this fills up your fog server will not crash and again if you don't do this setup eventually sooner or later your server will crash because the root volume will have filled up and Linux will will crash. Um, yeah. So it's just about done installing the base file system. Um, getting there. <laughs> Almost. just about done here. How far are we into this? 26 minutes. I could have made this video shorter, but uh, I wanted to teach as I went along. And most people that are watching this video are probably very, very new to Linux. And, and they need, they need a video that teaches and talks about best practice and what happens if you don't follow it. And this is this is uh, this video is in the scope of fog specifically. Other things may require other configurations, of course, right? Um, if you're behind a proxy in your organization, and many school districts are, you would enter your proxy information here. If you're not, then leave this blank. Uh, once you get pretty good at Linux and understand it and understand the file system and understand partitions, volume groups, logical volumes, physical volumes, physical disks, and mount points and just on the f just start getting really understanding of Linux in general. You won't need this video anymore and you'll just know you'll just know how to do it and you'll just breeze through this but you're watching this video because you're not there yet and you're learning and you're trying to figure out what you're supposed to do so I'm gonna this is why I'm being as detailed as I can be okay so this here is asking if you want to send anonymous usage data to the Debian team um, this is your choice um, I'm gonna say yes because I want to help out the Debian project and because this is just a test box and it's I'm just demonstrating how to set up Debian for fog properly so select and install software you do not need a desktop environment you do not need a print server you do not need standum, standard system utilities all you really need is an SSH server. This desktop environment, <coughs> people that are uh, new to Linux and are used to Windows and coming from Windows land, they, they generally cling, for, uh, cling as if for dear life to a GUI and to a desktop environment. I'll tell you now though, this you don't need it. All the instructions you find on managing your fog servers uh, OS, they're not going to be GUI instructions. They're going to be command line instructions. Just general, general stuff on the internet that you find. Uh, general instructions and troubleshooting on the internet will be command line instructions. GUI instructions are inconsistent across distributions and they change with the updates, the update cycle. So what you find may not 
be applicable. Plus, you're just not going to find a lot of GUI instructions to begin with. So, people that choose the GUI, they uh, generally they'll log into their pretty GUI, uh, and they will uh, put in their password next, and then um, as soon as they're logged in, they're like, "Ha." Huh beautiful GUI and then they go click on terminal to do work. So what's the point of a GUI if you're just going to work in terminal anyways? You don't need a GUI. So anyway, <coughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna, we're just about done with the installer here. It's getting ready to reboot. Okay, so install installation is complete. We're gonna continue. It should reboot. Okay, so it's rebooting. Okay. All right. All right, so it's up. We're going to log in with the name we created. Log in. We're going to switch to root with su root because we didn't install extra packages and system utilities, therefore sudo is not available. So now we're going to uh, install vim for ease of use so that we can configure ssh very quickly. So apt git install uh, vim. Vim is just a text editor, it's more friendly than vi. Uh, Let's see, it's just about done. And done. Clear. So now we're going to edit SSH's configuration file to allow root to log in through SSH. And then we'll change the root's password. And then we'll be we'll get out of this VM session and start using SSH. So vim at forward slash etsy forward slash ssh forward slash sshd underscore config is the configuration file again no drive letters like i said earlier this is the path etsy generally uh what etsy is is uh it holds configuration files in linux and they're normally in if they're big they they're in their own subdirectory so ssh has its own subdirectory some things do some don't but anyways, we're editing this. Hit enter. I'm going to go down to uh, this line here, permit root login. I'm going to change it from without password to yes. Escape key, colon, WQ, enter. All right. Now we're going to restart SSH with this command, S-Y-S-T-E-M-C-T-L. That's a system CTL restart sshd so secure shell daemon that's what that uh, expands to but it's called sshd that's the daemon name so hit enter oh did i misspell something s y s t e m c t l there so what's our ip address ip space addr enter this is uh we have 10.00.253. So now we know how to get to this box via SSH. Oh wait, we need to set a password. P-A-S-S-W-D and uh, hit enter. Testing, testing. <clears throat> so now, so it's a, uh, we can SSH into this box. So 10.00.253, exit, 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 close, don't need any more. All we need is SSH. So SSH minus L root, where this is an argument. So the user is root, login as root. And then 10.00.253. Yes, testing. All right, so this is one way to log in via SSH. Another way is SSH. Uh, root at 10.0.0.253 doesn't 53 doesn't matter how you do it 
they all get you to the same place. Uh, this this is how you would do it if you were connecting from OS X. Um, this is how I prefer to do it. And then of course there's lots of advanced other ways you can set up SSH aliases, all kinds of stuff. Linux is the ultimate configurable operating system. So anyways, here we are. We're inside of the VM. Clear. We're going to install git. Well, firstly, actually, let's back up. So this this layout that we designed during the installer, there's a couple of commands to actually see and visualize this. They are lsblk for listing logical listing block devices, right? lsblk. And then um, df minus h shows free space of mounted volumes, be they physical or logical or whatever, and in human readable format. And then, um, let's see, there's a VG display for displaying volume groups, and then there's LV display for displaying logical volumes. There's PV display for displaying physical volumes, of which we should have none. But it's it's just how the installer is. It doesn't use physical volumes. Um, but anyway, so let's look at LSBLK. So we have SDA, and SDA has. Uh, three partitions, two really, but it's three. So the first one is SDA1, it's a gig in size and it's mounted to boot. SDA2, we made this into a uh, partition with all remaining space and so I'm not entirely sure why the 1k partition is there but here's the big volume group partition that we made and inside of this big partition um, well this might be the grub bootloader now that I know because that would be here whatever but here's the big one and inside of there you see we have a volume group see the branch comes down here we have volume group zero and then a logical volume called base and it's mounted to the base directory and, it, and you see the type here, this is a disk. This is the physical disk. This is a partition, 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 logical volume, logical volume, logical volume, logical volume. And this is uh, the, the uh, uh, optical device where you would mount ISOs and such in your hypervisor. So you have swap, which is being used as swap. It's three gigs. Opt images has what looks like 58 gigs, which was all the remaining space, remember. Um, so, PV display. We have one physical disk, dev SDA5. So it did make a physical disk for us. That's good. So, and then uh, VG display displays a lot uh, volume groups. So we have one VG0. It's LVM2, read write. This is its size. Um, and uh, let's see, UID. None of this, you don't really use this, this information for anything really, <clears throat> except when you're adding space to the volume group. That's when this becomes important. And then uh, clear. And then logical volumes. So LV display. Here's your logical volume. So, so dev vg0 base is uh, where the base directory is mounted to. So, this is the actual path. Dev vg0 base. It's mounted to base. And this is its volume group name. This is its UUID. Um, its size, 
And here's swap, dev vg0 swap, and its name is swap. This is its volume group. So all your volume groups information is all is, is listed here. Um, so that's that's that. And you can Google search and learn all you want about that about that stuff further. But anyways, we're gonna install Git real quick. So apt git install git minus y. And then we're going to clone fog project. And that is where I will leave you because the the uh, the version of fog changes all the time and the installer generally does a good job so GitHub. And rather than confuse you with a version that may be different from what you're seeing. So if you go to GitHub, github.com and you search for fog project, you'll find fog project right here. Click that and go to clone or download and you want to clone it, just grab this URL here. And then uh, in here, after git is installed, you'll do git clone and then you'll paste in this URL. And this will clone the entire FOG project, which is about 500 gigs. And then um, you would follow, you would go into, after that's done, there would be a directory called FOG project. You'd go into there and then go into the bin directory, which that doesn't exist right now, but it would after this command. You go into there and then you'd run your installer like that and it'll do everything for you. Um, so that that's right now we're uh, this system is set up so that you could install fog and, and everything would be great and this system would last for years and years and years and it wouldn't crash when drives get filled up. So that's what I wanted to accomplish with this tutorial and this is where I will leave you. So from here you would clone the repository and then you'd install fog and that's it and you'd have a working fog server and uh, have a good day and if you have problems right you can always go to forums.fogproject.org you can go here and ask a question to the people who are involved with FOG, moderators and developers and senior developers and such. We'll answer your questions as best we can. We're generally pretty good at it. So this is where I'll leave you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.